about King, the most unexpected thing about you to me is that for a long time you've been a national leader of your people. You are one of the most influential figures, I suppose, in the United States, and yet you're only 32 years old. Now, did you have any special training for this kind of leadership when you were a boy? No, I really didn't. I had no idea that I would be catapulted into a position of leadership in the civil rights struggle in the United States. I uh, went through the discipline of uh, early elementary school education and then high school and college and theological training, but never did I realize that I would be in a situation where I would be a leader in what is now known as the civil rights struggle of the United States. What sort of home did you have as a child? Was it a strict home, for instance? Well, I guess it was a relatively strict uh, coming up in, in a minister's home. Uh, I faced uh, the discipline that you would face and a very uh, fervent religious background. However, uh, I don't think it was over strict to the point that uh, I developed any personality conflict, uh, conflicts as a result of my early childhood, but uh, it was strict enough, and uh, I think it was strict enough for me to develop certain disciplinary principles as I came up. Well, now, when you were still a small boy, before those decisions came along, were you conscious of color discrimination in your own life? Yes, I became conscious of color discrimination at a relatively early age. Uh, I think the first time was uh, when I was about six years old. Uh, I had some friends who lived, well, they didn't live in front of us, but uh, their parents had a store, two white boys, and they were my inseparable playmates for uh, the early years of my life. And I remember when I was about six, uh, something started happening. When I went over to play with them, uh, they always made excuses. They could not play, they were busy. And uh, finally, I went to my mother with this problem. And uh, she tried to explain to me in the best way she could explain to a child six years old. And this was really the first time that I became aware of the racial differences or rather the racial problem. Uh, she made it clear to me that uh, this, had, uh, this system had a long history uh, dating back to the time of slavery. She tried to explain the meaning of the system of segregation. Uh, but the thing I will always remember is that uh, in the midst of her explanation, uh, she always said to me, you must never feel that you are less than anybody else. You must always feel that you are somebody and you must feel that you are as good as anybody else. And of course, this came up with me in spite of the fact that uh, I still confronted the system of segregation every day. Was that a, a, a violent conflict in your life? If you really believed your mother and yet the system around you suggested that this wasn't true, it must have set up some sort of strain. Yes, I think so. I, as I look back over those early days, uh, I did have something of an inner tension. On the one hand, my mother uh, taught me that I should feel a sense of somebodiness. On the other hand, uh, I had to go out and face the system 
uh, which uh, stared me in the face every day saying, you are less than, you are not equal to. So this was a real tension within. Now, out of your own personal experience, the only example you've given me so far is one family where the mother didn't too much care to have you play with her children. What were you really prevented from doing as a child that a white child might have done? Well, in my uh, days in Atlanta as a child, there was a pretty strict system of segregation. Uh, for instance, I could not use uh, the swimming pool so that uh, for a long, long time I could not go and swim in until uh, the YMCA was built, a Negro YMCA, and they had a swimming pool there. But certainly a Negro child in Atlanta could not go to any public park. Uh, I could not uh, go to the so-called white schools. There were separate schools. And I attended a high school in Atlanta, which was the only high school for Negroes in the city. Uh, and this was a real problem because in Atlanta there are more than 200,000 Negroes. In many of the stores downtown, to take another ex example, uh, I could not go to a lunch counter uh, to buy a hamburger, a cup of coffee, or something like that. Uh, I could not attend any of the theaters. Only uh, there were one or two Negro theaters. Uh, they were very small, but uh, they did not get the main pictures. If they got them, they were two years late or three years late. So that uh, by and large, there was a very strict system of segregation and uh, there was nothing called racial integration at that time in Atlanta. Uh, but the thing I would always remember is that uh, in the midst of her explanation, uh, she always said to me, you must never feel that you are less than anybody else. You must always feel that you are somebody and you must feel that you are as good as anybody else.